let's uh, let's talk a bit about your music career, Judith, because it's been an extraordinary yeah. one. I, I remember getting down to Cape Town and already there was whispers of this extraordinary voice that just come through UCT and it was yeah. lighting up music. How, where did you fall in love with music? Um, I think, you know, I, I can't really, really remember, but what I remember is that from when I was really young, I was just a pain to everybody around me because I'd be just singing about anything. I'd be singing about you now, about this table, about, and my mom says from the age of, of two, so I would be just that girl who's just been singing, creating songs, and and they would say, "Well, you warasa, warasa, warasa," but they didn't realize what that was doing to me because, or what that was. And then I got to UCT. When I got to UCT, I remember my professor, Mike Campbell, gave me a song. Um, how high the moon? Actually, before that, I went to Transkei and I sang. They said someone must render an item. And ooh, one thing that I was never afraid of was to sing. Don't ask me, but I could never. I loved an opportunity to sing, right? Mm. So I got up and I sang a song called Paradise Road. But the only part that I knew of, of Paradise Road was the chorus. There are better days before us, and the burning bridge behind us. <laughs> The sky is blazing. There's a woman waiting, weeping, and young men are bleeding. Oh, 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 <laughs> and then I went to Cape Town and my life just changed. I got to sing with the orchestra for the, for the big band for the first time in my life, you know, surrounded by all those instruments and there's just this little girl, skinny, I was very skinny at the time, and I sang How High the Moon by Ella Fitzgerald. And I nailed it. I nailed it. And nobody forgot me after that day because there was a lot of people in the audience who who were promoters, who were just the right people that I needed in my life at the time. And my life changed ever since then. From orchestras, philharmonic orchestras, symphonic orchestras, traveling all the way to New York, I was never the same. But I knew one thing, I don't ever want to be ordinary. And I never was ordinary. And I always strive to actually associate myself with greatness everywhere I go. I draw it. Actually, I, pu I pull it in. All the way to singing with every international artist that I have ever confessed with my mouth that I would one day meet and sing for and with. A Cry, a Smile, and a Dance was sung by Al Jarreau. And I'm like, what? <sighs> You know, and Randy Crawford, um, uh, oh, so many, uh, Bibi Wine and um, Oliver Adams, and then Kenny G mm -hmm. took a cry, a smile, and dance, and he re recorded it for international release and reproduced it. And I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it's all about what I wanted. I just got crazy for this career, but my life just changed until today. Tonight.